Welcome, intrepid traveler, to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Mariana Trench, a compendium of facts, oddities, and well-meaning warnings for those who feel that space travel is simply too dry, or perhaps too mainstream. If you have a towel, an unquenchable curiosity, and a fondness for the bazaar, you're already halfway qualified for this journey to the deepest known point on planet Earth. So fasten your seatbelt, polish your pressure gauges, and try not to think about how many sandwiches have been lost to the abyss. Picture, if you will, the Pacific Ocean, a vast blue expanse that covers nearly half the planet's surface, hiding wonders, mysteries, and, as it turns out, a gigantic, watery dent known as the Mariana Trench. Tucked neatly east of the Philippines and south of Japan, the trench curves like a gentle lunar crescent, stretching for over 1,500 miles. Its most notable feature is Challenger Deep, a spot so deep, so utterly remote, that dropping a stone from the surface would see it vanishing into the inky blackness for over an hour before it finally lands, possibly next to a confused amphipod or the remains of last week's tuna sandwich. To understand the scale of the Mariana Trench, consider this. Mount Everest, that show-off of terrestrial heights, could be plucked from its Himalayan perch and dropped into Challenger Deep, and there would still be over a mile of water above its summit. The pressure at this depth is so immense, over 1,000 times that at sea level, that even the hardiest of deep sea critters must resemble armored marshmallows, and any wayward smartphone would be compressed into a sad, unrecognizable wafer. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Before you leap into the abyss, it's worth familiarizing yourself with the local residents. The trench is home to a collection of life forms so peculiar, so whimsically improbable, that even the most seasoned extraterrestrial biologist might raise an eyebrow. Amphipods the size of hamsters scuttle about in the mud, their exoskeletons reinforced for the pressure, but not, regrettably, for existential dread. Translucent sea cucumbers, resembling the ghosts of overcooked jelly beans, drift gracefully through the water, occasionally pondering their place in the universe. There are mysterious snailfish, pale and surprisingly delicate, who seem to spend most of their time wondering if evolution was perhaps a little too ambitious. And if rumors are to be believed, there may be a handful of aliens who took a wrong turn at Albuquerque and have been quietly sulking down here ever since. Of course, no inventory would be complete without mentioning the odd sock lost from the great laundry dimension and now serving as a cautionary tale for careless hitchhikers everywhere. If you're intent on joining this exclusive club of deep sea wanderers, you'll need a few essential items. First and foremost, a pressure resistant bathyscaph or deep submergence vehicle, preferably one with cup holders because even in the most forbidding environments, hydration is key and you'll want somewhere to put your instant ramen while you ponder the mysteries of the abyss. Speaking of which, high pressure instant ramen is a must. No one wants to be philosophical on an empty stomach and the boiling point of water is somewhat negotiable when you're beneath seven miles of ocean. Above all, never forget your towel. While opinions vary on its usefulness underwater, it's generally agreed that a towel provides comfort, modesty, and, in a pinch, a place to sit while waiting for rescue. If you're lucky enough to have a deep sea translator fish, an aquatic cousin of the babel fish, you'll be able to communicate with the local amphipods, though the conversation tends to be limited to mud recipes and existential sighing. Be aware that standard babel fish are notoriously bad at withstanding more than 1,000 atmospheres of pressure and may explode without warning. It's worth pausing for a moment to marvel at the physical forces at play. The trench exists because the Pacific Plate is slowly, inexorably sliding beneath the Mariana Plate in a geological tango that has lasted tens of millions of years. Picture tectonic plates as sumo wrestlers engaged in a contest so slow that entire civilizations have risen and fallen in the time it takes for one to budge an inch. The result of this ponderous wrestling match is a scar in the Earth's crust, a place where the planet folds in on itself, creating a home for creatures that thrive on darkness, pressure, and the occasional philosophical crisis. Despite its remoteness and crushing pressure, the trench is not immune to the foibles of surface dwellers. Scientists have found microplastics lurking in the mud, 
a testament to humanity's ability to send its refuse to even the most unreachable corners of the globe. This revelation has prompted much hand-wringing among environmentalists and at least one amphipod to take up knitting in protest. As for visitors, the list is short. Fewer people have reached Challenger Deep than have walked on the moon. The first to descend, in 1960, were Jacques Picard and Don Walsh, crammed into the Bathyscaphe Trieste, which creaked and groaned like an ancient door as it made its way to the bottom. Decades later came film director James Cameron, who, perhaps mistaking the trench for a particularly dramatic movie set, made a solo descent in a submersible of his own design. Each journey required meticulous planning, nerves of steel, and more than a little luck. The rest of us must content ourselves with remote cameras, grainy footage, and the occasional existential daydream. Those who do make the journey will encounter dangers both physical and metaphysical. The pressure is so ferocious that even the most robust vehicles resemble aluminum cans in a garbage compactor. The darkness is absolute, so all-encompassing that your own thoughts echo back at you with unnerving clarity. Sound itself is muted, absorbed by the thick, cold water, leaving only the faint click of crustacean claws, or if you're especially unlucky, the unmistakable sound of a shrimp fart, one of the great unsolved mysteries of marine biology. Yet perhaps the greatest danger is philosophical. Surrounded by the immensity of the trench, with nothing but miles of water above and the cold indifferent mud below, it's easy to feel very small indeed. The realization that you are, in the grand scheme of things, a tiny temporary organism in a universe that barely notices your existence can be both humbling and oddly liberating. Many a philosopher has come close to enlightenment down here, only to be distracted by the urgent need for more ramen. Still, there are moments of wonder. Bioluminescent creatures flash and flicker, their lights creating miniature constellations in the darkness. Strange, unidentifiable objects drift by, perhaps discarded technology, perhaps a long-lost artifact, or perhaps just the ocean's way of reminding you that not everything needs an explanation. The mud is home to ancient bacteria, some of which have not seen sunlight since before the dinosaurs, quietly going about their business in a world where time moves at its own peculiar pace. The trench is, in many ways, a mirror, a place where the boundaries between science and science fiction blur, where the fantastical becomes mundane, and the mundane acquires a shimmering, otherworldly quality. Here, the laws of physics are bent and twisted by pressure and darkness, and the only certainty is uncertainty itself. So, if you find yourself descending into the Mariana Trench, remember the cardinal rule. Don't panic, bring your towel, keep your wits about you, and be prepared for the unexpected. You may not find answers, but you will find questions, more perhaps than you know what to do with. And if, by chance, you come across a sock that doesn't belong to you, take it as a sign that you are not alone, and that even in the deepest, darkest corners of the earth, there is always room for a little cosmic absurdity. Life may find a way down here, but your smartphone definitely won't. The Mariana Trench is a place for explorers, dreamers, and those who aren't afraid of a little darkness. So dive in, keep your towel handy, and remember, the universe is vast and strange, but the trench is even stranger.